Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Back in 2012, I did a tutorial showing how to use the oil paint filter that was introduced in version CS6. This was an improvement to CS5's Pixel Bender plugin. When version CC came out, Adobe removed the oil paint filter altogether, but thankfully in version CC 2015.1.1, Adobe reintroduced it. If you already have the recent version of Photoshop or are considering upgrading to it, I'm going to show you how to use this amazing filter to transform your photos into beautiful impressionist paintings. Open a photo you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. To see your photo's size and resolution, go to Image and Image Size. This photo's width and height are 1456 pixels and its resolution is 150 pixels per inch. To achieve similar results from the filters that we'll be using, make your photo's resolution 150 pixels per inch. Before we start, let's make sure the oil paint filter is active. Go to Filter and Stylize. If your oil paint filter is grayed out, go to Edit, Preferences, and Performance. Make sure Use Graphics Processor is checked and click Advanced Settings. Check Use OpenCL, then click OK. Now, if you go back to Filter and Stylize, you'll notice that your oil paint filter isn't grayed out. Next, we'll convert our photo into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively as well as making the filters that we'll be using fully editable. Click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Vibrance. Drag the Vibrance all the way to the right. Since this particular photo is rather muted, I'll drag the saturation to the right as well, although this isn't essential. Make your photo active and go to Filter and Liquify. There are seven functions from which to choose. Forward Warp, Reconstruct, Pucker, Bloat, Push, Hand, and Zoom. For this example, I'll just use Forward Warp and I'll press my bracket key to the right or left to increase or decrease its size. Forward Warp basically pushes the pixels of the image forward as you drag your tool over your image. Feel free to use Pucker, Bloat, and Push as well if you want. Reconstruct will revert your image back to its original state by brushing over those areas. Pucker moves pixels toward the center of the brush area, and Bloat moves pixels away from the center as you click or drag on the image. This is pretty useful when you want to inflate or deflate something. Push moves pixels to the left when you drag the tool up and to the right when you drag it down. When you're happy with it, click OK. Go to Filter, Stylize, and Oil Paint. To see more of your image in the preview window, click the left magnifying glass icon and then drag your image in the preview window. Feel free to experiment with the settings, however, for this example, I'll make it Stylization 7.2, the Cleanliness 4.4, the Scale 10, and the Bristle Detail 10. For its lighting, I'll make the Angle minus 60 degrees, and the Shine 3. Go to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. This sharpens the image, which accentuates the brush strokes. Depending on the size and resolution of your image, you may want to adjust these settings. For this image, I'll make the amount 230%, the 
the radius 1.7 pixels, and the threshold 30 levels. Next, we'll place it on a canvas textured background and remove brush strokes around its perimeter. For your convenience, I provided a canvas texture that you can download. Its link is located in my video's description or project files. First, make your top layer active. The canvas texture will be placed above it. Open the texture file in Photoshop. To place it into your painting, press Ctrl A on Windows or Command A on a Mac to select it and Ctrl or Command C to copy it. Open your painting document and press Ctrl or Command V to paste the canvas texture onto it. To resize it, open your transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. To see the transform's entire bounding box, press Ctrl or Command 0. To reposition it, go inside the transform and drag it. To resize it, go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. Then, press Enter or Return. To fit your image back onto your canvas, press Ctrl or Command-0. Right now, the canvas texture is hiding all the layers under it in the Layers panel. To reveal all the layers under it, click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the canvas texture, and then invert the layer mask by pressing Ctrl or Command-I. Think of layer masks as stencils in which the white reveals and the black masks out. The black layer mask is masking out the canvas next to it. To reveal areas of the canvas around the perimeter of your painting, we're going to brush in white around the edges of the layer mask. To do this, open your brush tool and brush picker. Click the gear icon and dry media brushes, which comes with Photoshop. When you see this message, Click OK to replace your current brushes with the dry media brushes. Click this brush, which has a size of 20 pixels. Make sure your foreground color is white, and brush around the edge of your painting, which is actually revealing the canvas through the layer mask. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.